Oops, let's turn this off. We're gonna, we're gonna check this out. Where'd that go? Let's look at our patch notes. Let's see here. Into the void. It's not the 18th yet, you dingus. New weapon, the void gauntlet. Ooh. The void gauntlet has manifested in a turnum. Manipulate the powers of the void to support your allies and debilitate your enemies with this magical damage support hybrid weapon. The Annihilation Tree focus on, focuses on maximizing damage at close range and revolves around Void Blade, a summoned blade of corrosive void energy. The Decay Tree offers ranged healing and debuffs and revolves around Orb of Decay, a dual phase projectile that can debuff enemies and heal allies. So this is, uh, it's coming. What the f- This is basically Moira from Overwatch. Uh, new enemies. They're bringing in the Varangian Knights. They're invading knights currently raiding southeastern Eternum. They are led by Lord Commander Atalus, a Gaul with a reputation for brutality and a twisted sense of humor. Are vassals to a powerful warlord named Varric the Hammer Isnov. They have been sent to southeastern Eternum in search of magical artifacts and an arcane lore left behind by the Crimson Sorcerer. So new enemies. Whoa, 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 whoa. They're just straight up humans? Yeah, but at least they're new. All right, world experience. Erza's Forge has been updated and moved from Amrine Temple to Southwest Windsward. What? Okay, so they're trying to move this closer to the fishermen? Like, I don't understand why to do this. All right, run faster on roads. While running on roads, you will now receive a movement bonus. The movement bonus uh, will be of 10%. It will not trigger unless the player has been running for 3 seconds and they are on a road. And it will be cancelled if the player engages in combat in any way such as dodging, blocking, attacking, or being hit with a debuff. And I'm going to say this again. I was saying this on stream. I'll say this for the YouTube video. 10%? That's neat. It's a neat idea. But you remember when the Great Axe was bugged and people were using the Bloodlust thing and they had like permanent Bloodlust? That was a good movement speed buff. I don't know if 10% is really going to do anything. We can see. I like that they're playing with it, though. This is going to make some change, but you can't dodge roll cancel or anything like that in it. So it's like, is dodge roll canceling or using something like the, uh, the uh, bow speed bonuses or whatever, would those be quicker than this 10% 10 speed bonus? It very well could. That's why I want to see what they can do with it, but... It's nice to see that they're messing with this. This is going to do a little bit of difference, uh, make a change. It is not active while engaged in wars, outpost rush, or duels. But it is going to be engaged in open world PvP. Added a 10% luck bonus and a 30% gathering luck bonus to players flagged for PvP. This is a huge change. Holy f this is going to make people this this is going to convince people to flag for pvp at the end game there are going to be areas you lock down now and there are going to be those that can lock it down and those that can't lock it down it is it's just going to be what it is and i think a lot of drama is going to come for this but i think a lot of cool battles and things like that are going to come as well i don't know really how people are going to react to this but i think this is an amazing thing it convinces people to flag up at endgame like what's the point of going into Mirtgard or mines or any of these elite areas flagged what is the point what do you get you're not getting experience bonus you might as well just go as groups right now think if people were fighting over those elite spawns i think that's going to make a big change that's that's a big change they already added it they already added it New PvP faction missions are being added. Control points, intercept, and war camp loot. One of them literally is defeat enemy faction members and collect their tears. They are moving us around. They don't want us all going... They don't want world PvP to be Zerg fests. This is amazing. Why is this amazing? It's because not only are they getting people interested in PvP making them flag for the luck and everything like that they're spreading them amongst 
the territories. They don't want them all in one spot. They're spreading them out. And that is amazing. Oh, sweet. They finally added voiceover text for some. Oh, this is a good one. PvP experience bonus will no longer apply when in an expedition. So there's no point for you to go into an expedition flagged. You might as well just try to find a group across all factions because you're not getting a you're not getting a bonus. Do you get a luck bonus though? They didn't say that. They didn't say you didn't get the luck bonus. Ooh, here we go. Fixed a bug that allowed the well-fed buff to stack from different tiers and types of food. The most recent instance of the buff will now replace any previous versions. Food stacking was not intended. At least it's not meant to be here now. Increase the healing bonus of the light equip load from 20% to 30%, and increase the healing bonus for medium equip load from 10% to 15%. They are really trying to have healers in light armor. I like this. Updated jump in place to allow translation while in air. Oh, that's good. These are all just general quality of life fixes, it looks like. I don't even get what... Fixed an exploit by preventing gathering while in duels so players can no longer duel to avoid durability damage while gathering. What were you all doing? The f Reduce the damage reduction provided by the 250 constitution bonus from 80 to 60%. What did we do to hurt you? Why was this an issue? It was a one minute cooldown. It was one minute. This is the fix. Fix the bug that caused its bonus cooldown to trigger on a blocked hit. So I didn't even take damage and I lost the cooldown. And you're nerfing it? Why? Fuck off, AGS. There was no reason for this. Structures are now immune to buffs and debuffs that logically wouldn't affect the siege weapon and deployable structures. Disabled player collision on inferno traps due to players occasionally getting stuck on them. Made it so player can't deal damage to other players with weapon abilities through fort gates and war camp gates. Okay, just general quality of life. Outpost rush. Reduce the power of battle bread from 15% damage and defense to 5% damage and defense. <sighs> Reduce the damage reduction on the Baroness buff from 25% to 15%. Reduce the damage and defense on the commander tent from five... Uh, wow. Oh, wait. Uh. Uh. They fixed my bug that I kept bringing up. My skill says on block, I gain fortify and damage. But if I have a bleed on me and I'm blocking and I'm taking damage, I'm getting these stacks for some reason of fortify and and damage as if I was blocking an attack and I'm sitting there like that's not what the skill says they fixed it yeah 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 making warhammer changes there's so many changes holy shit warhammer's getting a change what they want is they want the juggernaut tree to be just as good as the crowd crusher tree so they're they're nerfing the perk you can get from uh your armor that gives you your shockwave a rend they're buffing up armor breaker they're buffing up mighty gavel and they're buffing up wrecking ball what are they really doing they're scaling up some of the damage that's about it and then they nerfed the rend from shockwave that's that's pretty much it uh one extra thing though this is what i use so this is really nice exhaustive attacks i use this even though i use all crowd crusher abilities this is a passive i use because i put debuffs on people this is nice this is really nice. This is a buff to uh, causing people to dodge less because of the Warhammer damage ideal. So, really, really nice. Really, really nice change. Reduced base healing by 20% across the board to account for the increase in healing from equip load. Oh, you poor healers. Normalized all targeted healing spells and target lock-on to have a max range of 25 meters out of out-of-range targeted healing functionality. So now you can you can target someone, but it would say target is out of range. Reduce the effectiveness of the Sacred Ground Fortify perk. It only goes up to 10%. That's not that big of a thing. This is huge. This isn't just a nerf to healers. This is a nerf to tanks too. Why in Expeditions, I utilized the f*** out of this stamina regen. This is what made me survive and block so well in Expeditions. I'm going to feel this. I feel bad for healers for this too. Like, this 
was nice to have as a tank. Like, to, to, for a heal, your healer to have when you're tanking, this was nice. Splash of Light got increased. They want you to use Splash of Light more. Um, meh. Increase the efficiency of Light's Embrace Connection upgrade from 1% to 2%. I don't even know what that is. Redu oh, they just really f***ed healers. Oh, they just f***ed healers. They just, they just straight up, straight up gutted them. They nerfed the blessed perk across the board. I feel like I'm going to feel this in uh, expeditions a lot more. We wanted to buff the throwing axe tree to make it more useful, buff the infected throw ability to make it more viable as an anti-healing ability, and improve the buffering for heavy attacks to make them more consistent to use. We also worked to resolve issues that resulted in missed hits. Uh, general life. So they didn't do it. The only thing they did to Berserk fixed an issue where Berserk would consume the Relentless Fury and accumulate it. They didn't change it. Berserk is staying exactly the same. Wow. Infected throw. Increased disease and weakness duration. Doubled it. From 5 seconds to 10 seconds. Increased the bonus duration on Loha targets from 8 seconds to 15 seconds. And increased the duration of the AoE. They just doubled all of this. Doubled the, the effect. Um, of Infected Throw. Here's the thing, though. If I still hit a heavy attack, I lose the Infected Throw debuff. So, fuck them. Uh, reduce the cooldown of Rending Throw. Yeah. They barely touched Hatchet. Great Axe. So they fixed, they fixed the issue where you got stuck in it. So they, they got the bug. That's a general PvP nerf to Gravity Well. They did it! They added Grit to Whirlwind. They finally did it. I said there was no reason for me to use Whirlwind because I got CC'd out of it. There was no point. They added grit to Whirlwind. Heavy pull. Fix an issue where heavy attacks had incorrect hitboxes when this passive was equipped. They cannot get heavy pull fixed. The gravity passive no longer increases the duration of all pulls. We updated the ability to not apply root for 0.25 seconds to targets hit by a pull. Okay, if that's what it is. If you, you now this is the skill that increases the duration of pulls, they changed it. If you pull someone, you root them for a quarter of a second. That's a pretty good change. I like that change. That's not a bad change. All right, on to the bow. Uh, th this is just general life stuff. People can find this out. This upgrade now applies haste at the end of the ability rather than at the start so that the buff duration is not partially lost during. This is pretty good. You get the haste at the end of the animation instead of the beginning because you would lose a second or two of an of haste. Like, what was the point, right? Really good. Evade shots getting a little bit of a buff there. You're, you're getting a speed bonus that should have been there from the start. Poison shot. Reducing the cooldown by five seconds and fixed an issue that could cause poison shot to go on cooldown without the ability being fired. So poison shot's just having a reduced cooldown. Rapid shot. Reduced cooldown. They're just buffing bow the whole way aren't they rain of arrows no longer hits enemies through doors fuck you bow users what the fixed an issue where hip firing with the bow was triggering the heightened precision passive from the musket ability tree <laughs> how do you screw that up whatever our main goal of the sword and shield updates were to make the leaping strike ability feel better and to improve the buffering for heavy attacks to make them more consistent that just helps me this is what i love shield rush is weakened going from four seconds to 10 seconds of weaken. I'm so using this. I already use improved rush because I, I could see the 10%. Now it's going 10 seconds. Oh, it's just better. 10 seconds of weaken to everyone around the enemy you shield, uh, shield rushed. Great ability. I love this. I think shield rush is going to be used a lot more because 10 seconds of reduced damage on your enemy is really good especially for mobs or if you're like on a point for war and you can get 10 seconds of all the melee enemies getting reduced damage yo yo and 10 seconds that also means that your shield rush will be coming up again soon so they're they're weakened a lot more often leaping strike reduce the cooldown increase the damage scaling sped up the recovery so they just generally buffed leaping strike I feel like damage sword and shield users are people that use uh, leaping strike. This this is where I tried using this instead of shield rush. It worked 
wonders, but it just wasn't for me. I think it's more of like a single target hit. We updated the fire staff. Did you now? To reduce some of the effectiveness of standard attacks due to how powerful they felt in comparison to certain abilities and updated some abilities to feel more impactful. I do not use magic. Like if you looked at them, they're weapon mastery. I don't use magic. Fire staff. I have not even picked it up. Ice gauntlet. I played around with it. Life staff. I use this because we needed extra heals at one point. So I don't know much about this, but pillar of fire. I heard a lot of people saying it wasn't worth it and they're wanting it to be increased. So it's damage got increased. Increase the damage scaling on flamethrower. I've been seeing people using flamethrower more recently. And passives. Ooh, a lot of passives to the... Uh, to the fire staff if you want to look at those i highly suggest you look at those now pause the video or anything like that uh because i'm putting this on youtube it's just going to be raw i like talking raw i'm just a raw person spear our goal was to buff and adjust some of the lesser used abilities to make a wider selection of abilities feel viable so they oh they adjust the distance with your heavy attack so you know those people in like Mirtgard and Mines and shit, they have the spears and they just like, and they like stick it out really far, giggity. And they, they <laughs> that was something I couldn't do with the spear. It had this deadly reach idea, but I never could really feel like I was at a deadly reach. It seems they're trying to make that work with the heavy attacks. That's really cool. You can keep your distance from other people with the spear and still be considered a melee. That's what I thought the spear was supposed to be. You like poke them and get back and poke them and get back right you're you're like a small to medium range rather or short to medium range rather than just short range so i think this will help this would do a little bit of a change for the heavy attacks for sweep increases the damage scaling and this attack is now flagged as heavy allowing it to trigger heavy related passives Ooh. Ooh. that's a big one this now has on hit effects from your skills. Hmm, that's a big buff. That's something to look into. Sweep, just that little, they didn't, I bet you they didn't even have to do the damage scaling. I bet you they could have got away with just adding heavy related passives to it. That's gonna slap. That's gonna hurt, damn. Skewer, increase bleed damage. Bleeds are always nice. I feel like bleeds and dots. I, as a tank, I heal faster my general healing and regen is faster than bleeds and dots on me. Now, if I have one dot on me, I can understand that. But if I have three dots on me, I really have to admit, like, even if they do less damage, they should do more damage than my regen. And seeing an increase in bleed damage, I think that's really nice. I want people to use dots more. Like, I used to play Warlock. Uh, Perforate increases damage scaling from 70 to 80%. That's, that's a pretty big bonus. That's a 30% extra damage through the three hits. Cyclone. Damage scaling by 20%. I still wouldn't use Cyclone. Uh, these. Sweep, Skewer, and Perforate. These are some big buffs. Spear looking good. Especially with Sweep, dude. Sweep is looking good. Ice Gauntlet. Again, I don't know anything. Oh my, look at all of this for Ice Gauntlet. You expect me to read all this shit? A lot of stuff going on with Ice Gauntlet. They increased the startup and recovery time for heavy attacks on Ice Gauntlet. They fixed an issue that some of your ice shots went through people. Ice Storm. Here's a big one. Ice Storm was always used. Damage between ticks got increased in time. I don't see this as saying it's doing less damage. They, this is very unclear. Is this meaning there's going to be less damage ticks in the ice storm? Or is this meaning that each tick is going to do more damage but come at a later interval? This is, this is something to think about. I don't know. But other than that, like this could be no change at all. Essentially no change at all. Or this could be a drastic damage nerf. Ice, uh, wing chill got increased damage. Ice chower increase the cooldown okay so ice shower this is the first nerf i'm seeing ice showers cooldowns getting increased entomb players can no longer be healed reduce the health of the tomb to 50 percent of players max health wait a minute this is just becoming a general shield well i don't know how that's going to affect y'all but entomb doesn't look nearly as good to me anymore uh ice pylon increase the health of ice pylon add a max lifetime of 45 seconds to it that's pretty much it. Ice pylon health and, and duration got increased. 
That's nice. Ultimate chill. Reduce the ultimate chill's bonus damage from 35% to 25%. That's where this 4% bonus came in. For wind chill, they're doing a 10% redu reduction here. Reduce the critical change bonus from 20 to 15. Reduce critical damage bonus from 15 to 10. Added a 5 second cooldown to the freeze effect. So you can't just keep people rooted forever. Okay. So they had a little bit of a damage nerf in their passives. I, I highly recommend, again, looking at the passives right here to see if you use Ice Gauntlet. I am not a magic user. I don't know enough about them. Rapier. So the only thing I think really matters, Tondo got a reduced cooldown. Repost got a reduced cooldown. And the stun duration went up. Momentum got a damage increase. Yeah, those are the big things. You got some damage, a little bit of stun increase, cooldown reduction, and a small damage increase for Rapier. Not the best, but that's still an increase. This this repost, I think, is going to really help with your guys' defense as a as a more squishier melee person with a rapier. What the fuck? Stop messaging me. I mean, you only have a 12 second repost cooldown. I don't know. I think that that's gonna see then we're gonna see something cool with rapier. I don't that wasn't much of a change though. Musket. Musket, musket. This looks like our last one. We increase the musket base damage by 2.5%. Traps can no longer be triggered by players in death's door. Sticky bombs damage increased. Is that 60%? They increased that bitch by 60%? I thought I was dreaming here for a second. Stopping power. Reduce cooldown. Reduce cooldown on power shot. Reduce cooldown on shooter stance. And players can now exit shooter stance by pressing sprint, the ability key, dodge, escape, or releasing the right mouse bumper. So reduce cooldowns all around, sticky bomb got increased, and a general muskets do 2.5% more damage. Not bad. Not bad at all. They got new enemies, new lost enemies, skeleton maid. The strong corrupted laborer has put down his pickaxe and picked up some weights, now looking larger than ever. No one cares about this. General quality of life. Okay, here we go. Faction change cooldown has been reduced to 60 days. And they added a chunk of... You can now buy the resilient perk for I for armor from your faction vendor. All trading posts have been linked. This is the, the big thing. All trading posts are linked. All the taxes will go to where it was listed. So if you say your company owns a territory and it's a gold sink, you just no one's doing uh, business in there. If you put all your shit up on the market there and someone buys it from Everfall and you're an Evan Scale, Evan Scale's getting the taxes. Reduce durability loss from PvP deaths by 10%. This is really weird to put it in economy, but okay. Housing taxes are now due every seven days instead of every five days. No changes to cost, so players will gain two days of housing time without an increase to their taxes. Nice. Ooh, 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 ooh. Increase the experience requirements for progressing crafting trade skills. Armoring, weaponsmithing, furnishing, all of those. Cooking. Increase the XP requirements. Once players unlock a new tier of recipes, an example, when they go from iron to steel, the XP requirements to continue progressing by just crafting things at the previous tier will be significantly diminished. However, it should still take the same amount of effort to progress the crafting skill if you craft items in the highest tier you are capable of crafting. What they're really wanting to do is you, they don't want you getting to 200, uh, like 200 armoring by making a bunch of steel gauntlets. That's not fair. Like, how many steel gauntlets are you going to make to get 200? That's ridiculous. So what they want you to do is they want you to make end game gear gear using phoenix weave gear using uh or calcum gear using those kind of things uh so that you're working on it to sell on the market trade skills we felt that some of the higher tier core potions particularly health potions and mana potions were a little too difficult to craft so we updated the recipes to craft these items and introduced a new alchemical component to do so alkahest Alkahes is crafted by distilling the magical herbs found throughout Eternum and serves as a reliable and potent base for potions going forward. I'm going to take a wild guess. This is from Hisop. And this is why Hisop's going to be important. Fixed an issue that was causing higher tier common items to drop from certain low level enemies. Okay, what about me getting like 
common regeneration potions in Mirkgard. Can we fix that? I don't like that anymore. They ha they added a do not disturb option into the game. That's funny. That's about it. Some nice changes. Some changes all around. I like this. We're getting Void Gauntlet. There's some things they didn't do. The Void Gauntlet is coming. Yeah, I think this would be a lot of fun. I think this would be a lot of fun. We'll see what it can do.